Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us for the Rocky Mountain Myrick Short Take on Suicide Prevention Podcast. I'm Joe Huggins, filling in for Adam Hofberg. Today, we're talking with the Sacred Bundle, which is a tribal youth suicide prevention program funded by a SAMHSA grant. We first came in contact with the Sacred Bundle at this past year's American Association of Suicidology Conference. And we were just very interested in the poster, which won Best of Show for Thursday night, and the program that they are offering. And let's have the four folks from Sacred Bundle introduce themselves. Lauren? Hello, my name is Lauren Lockhart. I am the Sacred Bundle uh, Program Manager. Hi, I'm Karen Marshall. I'm the Sacred Bundle Outreach and Training Coordinator. Hello all, I'm Darius Watkins, the Program Assistant of the Sacred Bundle Program. And I'm Jennifer Hobson. I am the Program Coordinator for the Evaluation Team. Great, thank you all very much for joining us. And I understand you're all on spread out there in Detroit in Ann Arbor. Let's start with you, Lauren. Could you tell us a little bit about what Sacred Bundle is and what it does? Yes, so Sacred Bundle is a five-year grant that focuses on suicide prevention for American Indian Alaska Native youth ages 10 to 24. Um, we have three main elements to our project, including outreach, training, and evaluation. Um, additionally, we do something called uh, hope and wellness screenings, which we'll get into a little bit further on in this. But for now, I'm going to turn it over to Karen Marshall, our outreach and training coordinator, to talk a little bit about the training portion of the Sacred Bundle Project. Karen? Uh, the training program uh, that's part of this project has just been phenomenally successful and grown beyond what we ever could have planned. Essentially, our approach is to form partnerships with the different tribes throughout the state of Michigan. And um, now, thanks to a, a partnership with uh, some other federal agencies, including HRSA and the Indian Health Service out of their Bemidji area office, we're working regionally. So we're, we work with tribes in Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and Wisconsin to offer trainings to the community. What we have found is that the the tribal nations really know what they need and they know what they have and they know what their goals are. And so we try to come alongside and offer them the trainings and the support to build suicide prevention coalitions um, within their own areas. Uh, the general idea is to help them construct a really strong safety net uh, to become a suicide safer community by combining the work of their behavioral health and, and um, physical health providers, along with really well-trained lay people, to all have the same um, approach to recognizing somebody who might be having thoughts of suicide, especially a young person, and then working to get them to the appropriate care that they need. So we, we offer uh, mental health first aid um, and the whole suite of living works trainings, including suicide talk, safe talk, and assist. We've been fortunate enough to get additional trainers, so it's not just our group providing the trainings, but we now have trainers throughout the region in ASSIST, and we're getting ready to offer a training for trainers for Safe Talk. So in that way, we're going to be able to further spread that message that, yes, suicide is preventable, and all of us can play a role in it if we'll step up and do it. So the response to that, to that approach has been um, just beyond what we ever could have imagined. And it also, um, since we work with youth or young people up to age 24, um, we also encounter issues of um, the impact of historical trauma and among uh, young veterans, um, PTSD, and the impact that that can have on not only them but their families and their community. We have found this to be really a very applicable training program. Um, it, it applies to a lot of folks who are working in, in different aspects of their of their communities. That pretty much describes our training program, and I think that Darius will talk with us now about the outreach that we do. Thank you, Karen. And Karen hit a lot of great points. Um, those two things kind of come hand in hand with the training and the outreach. We've been very fortunate and blessed enough to work with 
different municipalities in the state of Michigan. So, for example, um, we have a relationship with one of the mayors here in the city uh, or here in the state of Michigan, um, the Farmington Hills mayor, Mr. or Dr. Ken Massey. We've had an opportunity to be able to share information with him as well as introduce him to some of the programs and some of the trainings that we've been able to um, implement here through IHS or through the whole um, sacred bundle team as a whole. We've also worked with um, other organizations as well, as far as we have HUGS. We've also done work with um, youth programs here as well, too. So we've worked with our Dream Seekers Youth Program, who also have ages from 10 to 18, some of those youth who are interested in joining the military and who are interested in those things. So we're also furthering our education or furthering their education into how to become better better prepared to go into um to go out into the field of that work and to be able to kind of be there to help support their friends if they're going through an emotional time or if there's something that they can do to be there for them. Um, also in our outreach, uh, we've been working closely with um, the other tribes here that are in the state of Michigan as well, too. So we've just been spreading the message about suicide prevention and intervention and how we can better serve our communities, as Karen said earlier, before the tribes know what they want and we're in a position to be able to help them to provide with the things that they need. So. With that being said, I would like to pass it on to the evaluation part of our project, which Jennifer will talk more about. Hi, this is Jennifer, and I'm part of the evaluation team. We collect a lot of information about, in particular, who is participating in our programs, both the training and our screening. Uh, so that's a lot of demographic information. Uh, we want to know where people are from, how they identify in terms of race and ethnicity and gender. We also do a lot of follow-up on both our trainings and screenings to see what kind of information is retained on the people who have done our training. And if they feel more comfortable in addressing suicide and discussing suicide months after they have done the training than they did before they took the training. We also do a series of follow-up on our youth who screen positive for depression at our screenings, but you should learn more about our screenings from Lauren before I tell you about that. Thank you, Jennifer. So I also wanted to add that um, the hope and wellness screenings are not only done community-based, but also internally here at American Indian Health and Family Services of Southeastern Michigan. Um, so the acronym for that is AIHFS. So here at the agency, we are an urban Indian um, physical and behavioral health provider, so we do have behavioral health available as well as a medical clinic located centrally on our grounds. So additionally for the hope and wellness screens, it was something that was is culturally adapted to include, to be culturally sensitive to many different cultures and backgrounds. And so I also wanted to add that the sacred bundle name, we were able to transcribe it into Ojibwe, since we are in um, Anishinaabe territory, and that was something that elders from around the community helped to translate. And so whenever we do any outreach or anything that we do, we do have the translated name um, on our T-shirts and on all of our stuff, and our logo is that of a sweat lodge with youth uh, surrounding it as well. And so for the Hope and Wellness screen, it was something we had a first, uh, round of funding that helped us to build the infrastructure for the Hope and Wellness Screen. So that was from 2011 to 2014, where we really looked at different behavior health screenings and said, okay, how will these different screens help to identify suicide, depression, and substance use um, within youth ages 10 to 24? So moving on from there, we got a second round of funding, which we're currently in, which is 2014 to 2019. And the Hope and Wellness screen includes several forms, including the PHQ-9, that is the Patient Health Questionnaire, and that talks more about depression and suicide. We also have the Audit, which is the Alcohol Use Disorders Identification Tool, the DAST, which is the Drug Abuse Screening Test, and also the CRAFT, which is the Car, Relax, Alone, Forget, Friends, and Trouble. And we use the CRAFT to ask questions about substance use or substance abuse with our youth that are under 18 years old. 
um, all questions that are included within the Hope and Wellness screen are worded in such a way that a youth can understand. So if there's something that they don't understand, our screeners um, also explain the terms to them. And the screenings are conducted, like I said, internally here um, at the agency as well as at different community events such as uh, powwows that we go to throughout the state of Michigan. And we ask that the screeners, that all screeners are volunteers. Sometimes it's a mix of staff and community members. And we do ask that all screeners are at least Safe Talk trained. So like Karen hinted at, we, we not only offer a plethora of trainings, but we put those trainings to use as well in our daily work that we do through Hope and Wellness Screens. And additionally, something that is within Hope and Wellness Screen is that our youth help to, from the Dream Seekers program here, help to create the wrap-up question. So we understand that suicide, depression, substance use, just talking about those feelings in general is a very intimate and can be a vulnerable thing. And so we went to our youth and said, you know, how do you feel after um, answering these questions for a screening? And, of course, they said, you know, oh, it's, it's a little bit much to talk about. And so we asked, how can we improve this process? And so they came up with wrap-up questions that asked things like, what's your favorite season? Who's your favorite person to hang out with? Things of that nature. So that every time we end a screen, we're not just ending on, okay, you tested positive for suicide or, okay, thank you so much for giving us this information. See you later. So we end on a positive note. And all youth, ages 10 to 24, um, have those wrap-up questions, and they end up going home with that as well, as well as different resources from around the state. And we've also included uh, First Nations, which is what people in Canada refer to as uh, the Native American. It's the similar term. So we have First Nations resources um, for individuals that come on over the border, since Detroit is very close to Canada, uh, for youth to go home with those resources as well. So we have a resource packet we have the wrap-up questions at the end of the Hope and Wellness screen. And additionally, we've added making um, what we call emergency smudge bundles. And so while parents or youth are waiting to get screened or just want to hang out and see what we're about, we have materials to make smudge bundles. And so smudging is a process um, that we use here at the agency as well as um, at our screenings which just, um, it's a one, we use one of the four sacred medicines uh, here, which is uh, sage, uh, sweetgrass, uh, cedar, and tobacco. And we use a sage, and what we do is we tend to um, burn that and then just let the smoke come over us to just clear our minds and get ready to have either a great meeting here at the agency or before we start um, the screening, the Hope and Wellness screening, wherever we're at. And so these uh, smokeless bundles is just putting sage together so that you can crush a little bit. And again, it's just being very trying to be very culturally sensitive and just embracing the communities that we come into asking these very intimate questions and that we want to leave people with as many resources and good feelings as we can. As we know, we said before, it is a very difficult subject. And so um, this year we've screened close to um, almost 200 youth. Um, and so we're planning actually to do um, two more screenings for our grant year that ends in September. So. We have a lot of uh, components to our grant uh, with this Hope and Wellness screen. We, like I said, we do involve the youth are involved in making the wrap-up questions. The elders help translate our name into um, Ojibwe. And, oh, additionally, every year we go to our advisory councils here at the agency to ask people, how are we doing? Um, is there something we should be aware about going on with the youth? Are there terms or things that we need to be asking the youth about? So. It is very community involved. Um, we try to get our youth as well as adults and elders involved wherever we can to just support our youth. As our name says, Sacred Bundle, we want to make sure that um, we're, we're able to uh, prevent and also intervene in suicide or just uh, depressive or sad feelings within our youth. We want to be able to make sure they know that they can turn to the agency. They know they can come to the Hope and Wellness screens and trainings and things of that nature that we do and get some help or get connected to help um, so that they can continue to live great lives um, in which we know our youth have a lot to offer um, here at the agency as well as through our process. So um, we have a lot uh, within our Hope and Wellness screens, and uh, I'm going to turn it back to Jen to maybe to explain a little bit about the evaluation of the screen. So um, over the course of both grants, so the full length of the program, we've screened 327 youth, 
and about two-thirds of those have been under 18, and the remaining third are between 18 and 24 years old. And of those, we, we found that about 13% have screened positive for, for risk of either suicide or substance misuse. So we conduct a lot of follow-up with those youth to try to make sure that we ensure continuity of care with them. So the first thing for any youth who screens positive, we ask them to see a behavioral health provider immediately on site. And that person will provide safety planning and um, we'll give them any uh, referrals or resources that we think they could benefit from. We also have them contacted within 48 hours by a crisis center. We have a contract with Common Ground, which is a local branch of the suicide hotline. And they will call our positive screen youth for us within 48 hours of the screening just to check in with them and see how they're doing, make sure that they're okay, and let them know that they're available in case that youth wants to talk with someone. Then we have a, a third contact which is our behavioral health department will contact that youth within the first week after screening just to check in with them, make sure that they're okay, that they have the resources that they need, and uh, help them to get their appointment with the referral if that's necessary. Finally, we follow up a month after the screening with the youth if we are able to reach them to try to find out if they received the follow-up care that we recommended. Um, as I mentioned, we collect a lot of demographic information and, of course, we store all of the screening information and the wrap-up questions. All of that is stored uh, anonymously. We don't keep the youth's name stored with their information, um, but we will ultimately be able to evaluate and analyze all of that data to get information about who we're screening and who is screening positive, and hopefully, to show that those youth are getting the care that we've referred them to. Does anyone else have anything to add? Um, this is Lauren. I would add that um, everything that we do, although we are primarily focused on uh, American Indian, Alaskan Native um, youth, we also include everything that we do is open to non-Native populations as well. So throughout our community, like Darius talked about, working with like the mayor of Farmington Hills, which is a suburb of Detroit, um, we reach out wherever we're needed, um, or if people reach out to us, we go. So we, we do a lot around the state of Michigan just to help any youth, I would say, that, that needs help, whether it's uh, having a training for a community or coming up to do a screening or just doing a talk about um, youth suicide prevention is something that we're very passionate about. So we go where we're called, and, and that could be anywhere from the Detroit all the way up to the UP. Um, so we cover a large space and we try to interact with um, as many youth as possible because we know all youth are sacred bundles. Um, I just want to say how cool that was to hear, hear you say um, all youth are sacred bundles. So Karen, what was, what was it uh, you wanted to add? Yeah, I just had a thought to kind of um, wrap up my thoughts around this, this um, opportunity to talk about our project. And that is the real beauty, I think, of what we do is that it's a, a really layered approach. Um, in many cases, we start out with with awareness and outreach, like um, Darius and Lauren were talking about, um, and then move into the trainings that prepare people to really be um, caretakers of the sacred bundles in their communities. Uh, and then with those trainings behind them, they can move up to offering the hope and wellness screenings. Um, I think it's a really positive sign that some of the tribes that we've done trainings with are now beginning to offer uh, the hope and wellness screenings on their own with us providing technical assistance and support for what they're doing and, and we're seeing signs that that's going to continue to grow as well. So they're really building these um, very, very layered, very strong, um, caring communities for their youth and for, for the older folks who are also exposed to, um, to the message of suicide prevention, intervention, and uh, good care. So it's it, we just seem to be building in a way that um, feels really good to all of us and to the communities that, that we're um, privileged to work with. Yeah, it does. It sounds very exciting, the work that you're doing. Is this a program that you see can be replicated in other parts of the country? 
just throw that out there to to anyone. This this is Lauren. Um, I do believe that our program can be duplicated. It is something that we are actually working on now is just having conversations about, you know, how can we take this to communities throughout um, the country, if not the world. So we've had interest from around the world actually about um, what we do in terms of reaching indigenous populations as we do here in Detroit and like I refer to uh, First Nations individuals in Canada as well. So um, we we think that it can be and we that it can be replicated, um, especially the hope and wellness screens. Many times people, um, for whatever reason, the top two that come to mind are accessibility and affordability, um, cannot per se make it into say a therapist's office or a hospital, especially if you're living in a rural area. We talk about like the UP, where the nearest hospital could be something like 150 to 200 miles away. If you're in crisis you're in crisis and sometimes they can't wait for you to drive um, or, or have someone get you there um, in, in so quick of a time. And so we, we're really thinking about how this can be used in a variety of communities um, from urban to rural to in school systems because we really think that um, the community is where it's at and community involvement is what's really going to help to take the hope and wellness screens as well as everything we do um, off the ground because like Karen um, alluded to we're creating a net it's not only us helping um, the youth or offering things that can help um, prevent youth suicide but it's getting everyone child youth elders everyone involved in this in this net if you will to protect our sacred bundle so I do think that um, this can be replicated um, in in many many communities throughout uh, the United States yes in the world <laughs> Just to wrap up then, is there anything um, you'd like to make sure our audience knows about your work, the sacred bundles that you're working with? Um, I think strongest um, strongest feeling that I have about the work we do is when we go into a community and, and provide trainings or do hope and wellness screenings, um, we leave knowing that we don't have to be there in order to help save a life from suicide or or stop a suicide attempt even, um, that the people in the community are prepared to do that. I think there's very little that's more gratifying than to hear a week or two weeks after a training uh, somebody call and say, I never thought I would have to use the skills that you taught me, but guess what happened? And then we hear about... Um, something, you know, the story of, of saving a life from suicide or stopping an attempt that's happened because of, of what we were able to provide to them. And that, that's such a such an honor and such a privilege to be a part of that and to know that the communities have it within themselves now to really spread this work and, and to keep it going. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. If I could just really chime on in, but I know we talked about a lot of information over this brief period of time, and I would like to give people an opportunity to get in contact with us if they have any other questions or they would like to hear this information for themselves. Um, they can give us a call at area code 313-846-3715. And once again, those calls can be forwarded to myself, Darius Watkins, our program manager, Laura Lockhart, our training and outreach coordinator, um, Karen Karen Marshall. Uh, we can all, always we're always available to help talk to um, anybody that has a little that has interest in what we're doing, or they just have questions. They just would like to bounce ideas off of um, uh, bounce ideas off of what they may have, and in, uh, in regards to any questions that they may have about um, our project. And we can also be reached at our social on our social media sites at Sacred Bundle. H H that sacred bundle S A C R E D bundle B U N D L E H H as in healing helpers. I um, mean we're e easily um, available. We'll definitely like to talk with anyone if they have any further questions about the project or um, any other things that we have done here so far in our community. Thanks, Darius. Um, no problem, Joe. For reeling me back in. And Darius, of course, is the outreach coordinator and doing a little bit of that work here and now. And that's really cool because on the web page where this podcast will be, we'll have links, of course, to the Sacred Bundle uh, website. Um, we'll, we'll post those phone numbers, the phone number that Darius just gave us, and the social media 
contact and any other information that we have for Sacred Bottle, some things that you can download. So all of that will be available uh, because, again, this work is important and uh, it's just so exciting to, to hear what communities are doing for each other, for their members, uh, for their sacred bundles. Okay, any any other last last little bits before I sign us off? Uh, no, Joe, I'm, I'm quite sure I could speak for the team. We'd just like to thank you for um, giving us a, a chance to speak about our project. And it just kind of hearing everything that was said, it just kind of brings back that fulfillment, that joy in my heart that we're doing something really impactful to not only help our communities, but the communities around the world. So thank you, Joe. Well, thank you, all of you. It's been, it's really been our pleasure and a joy in our heart. So again, that's going to be it for today. We appreciate everyone out there listening to our program. And again, you can learn a lot more about uh, Sacred Bundle and the work that they're doing on our website that will accompany this podcast. And don't hesitate to reach out to Sacred Bundle and don't hesitate to reach out to us and suggest topics for um, future podcasts. Um, please take a moment to subscribe, give us a review, share with your colleagues and friends, and join us next time for more interviews on suicide prevention well-being, and resilience. This has been the Rocky Mountain Short Takes on Suicide Prevention podcast. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.